Welcome back to Timelines, the show where I explain different timelines for different horror movies. My name is Anthony from the Knights of Horror, and today on Timelines, we're talking about the Insidious franchise. We're going to break down the universe, put each movie in chronological order as to when it takes place in time, and talk a little bit about it. So without further ado, let's get this video started. Welcome to the Madhouse! <laughs> Alright ladies and gentlemen, today like I said we're talking about the Insidious franchise. Now the Insidious franchise is known from jumping back and forth from each sequel as it went on. Uh, in the first movie obviously we saw the story of one family, in the second movie we saw the continuation of that story but it jumped back in time of course to explain some backstory stuff. Insidious 3, it took us to a whole nother family and a, a whole nother situation where we saw another backstory go down and we also saw of course it went further back in time and of course in Insidious 4 when we see the origin of Elise and we see a little bit more back in time when at least one of Elise's and the and the uh, paranormal crew's first uh, case so without further ado I'm just gonna explain to you a little bit about the timeline uh, you're gonna see some visuals and stuff like that so here we go Insidious The Last Key takes place in 1953 through the 1960s. Insidious The Last Key takes us back to the 50s childhood home of demonologist Elise Rayner and her abused filled childhood. We learn how the emergence of Elise's gift causes her to see all sorts of ghosts and frighten her father so badly he went to sick extremes to punish her for them. One night while locked into the basement, Elise is contacted by a malevolent spirit which tricks her into releasing it into the world. The key-faced demon murders Elise's mother, forever changing a dark uh, rift between her and her father. When Elise reaches her teenage years in the 60s, a final confrontation with her dad forces Elise to run away from home. Abandoning her brother Christian to a harsh life under the father's thumb, Elise commits to her gifts inspired by the late mother's loving words to go out into the world and help people. Now we're going to go on to Insidious Chapter 2, which takes place in 1986. This is, of course, the sequel to the first Insidious, so the uh, second Insidious movie as follows as this. After building a career as a demonologist, Elise is contacted by Dr. Lorraine Lambert, who needs help with her son, Josh. When Elise discovers a powerful demon, the Black Bride, tries to possess Josh, she realizes the boy is gifted with the ability to project his mind into an astral place while asleep. As a safety measure, Elise uses hypnosis to suppress Josh's gift, hoping to keep the demon away from him. Of course, the fix is only temporary as decades later, the demon haunting Josh eventually makes its way back to his son Dalton, who shares Josh's uh, astral projection ability. After trying to beat back the demon in the year 2010, Josh, Dalton, and Elise's spiritual forms travel through the uh, otherly world realm called the further back to 1986 where they can make contact with young josh during he and elise's first meeting young josh points the group to the home of parker carrying a serial killer who committed suicide in the hospital where lorraine was a doctor after being admitted for trying to castrate himself investigation through the further reveals that crane was horribly abused by his mother michelle who is actually the demon woman in the white dress that has been haunting both elise and the lamberts for years with the knowledge of the past, the group traveled back to 2010 to battle the demonic Michelle Crane. Then we're going to go to the 2000s. That's where we get Insidious 3 and The Last Key. Of course, those are the, um, like I said, the prequels for uh, Insidious 1 and 2. They kind of go back a little bit, tell different stories about different things. And it follows as this. Between the time when Elise first met young Josh in 1986 and adult Josh in 2010, the demonologist worked several big cases. The first was a case several years before her reunion with Josh with uh, Elise temporary in retirement is contacted by a young girl named Quinn Brenner who is trying to make contact with her dead mom. Elise starts to help the girl but senses a demonic presence hanging over her. The warning signs come too late as Quinn is soon haunted by a dark spirit and an oxygen mask called the man who can't breathe. At first Elise refuses to battle the demon, feeling the backbite haunting the further who has been getting closer and closer to killing Elise every time she uses her gifts. However, after some amateur demonologists named Spex and Tucker try and fail to handle Quinn's possession, Elise finds the courage to return and return to the further and battle the man who can't breathe. With help from the spirit of Quinn's mother, Elise defeats the evil spirit and frees Quinn. Inspired by the victory, Elise returns to active work as a demonologist, now partnering with Spex and Tucker as her researchers. Sometime after the Quinn Baroner case, Elise is contacted 
for help by Ted Garza, the man who has moved into Elise's childhood home. Garza claims that an evil spirit is haunting him and Elise knows that it must be the same spirit that she released as a young girl, the key-faced demon that killed her mother. Despite the massive trauma, Elise musters the courage to go back home to Five Keys, New Mexico and confront her past. Once back in the hometown, Elise makes contact with her estranged brother Christian and his two daughters, Melissa and Emojin. At first, the investigation leads to the reveal that Garza is actually a serial killer who has been keeping a young girl chained in his basement. However, after a craze, Garza is killed by Specs. It's further revealed that Garza was a puppet for Keyface and that the demon had once possessed Elise's father, turning him into a serial killer for many, many years. After Melissa's spirit is trapped by Keyface, Elise tries to go to the, into the further to save her niece, only to be tricked by the Keyface into unleashing all her repressed anger at her father's condemned spirit. With the help of Specs and Tucker, Emojin accesses her own power as a spiritual medium, traveling into this further to save Elise. With the help of Emojin as well as both of her parents' ghosts, Elise manages to exercise Keyface and save Melissa. However, in tracking Keyface through the further, Elise inadvertently opens a door between the ghost realm and the home of the now adult Josh Lambert, setting in motion a new series of dark events. Fully reunited with her family, Elise finds she's finally able to shed the fear of death and the further in order to fully embrace her gifts. And now we're gonna go on to Insidious and Insidious Chapter 2, which of course take place in 2010. Soon after confronting Keyface, Elise is once again contacted by uh, Lorraine Lambert who reports that her son, Josh, is once again being plagued by a demon. Elise rushes to the aid of Josh, his wife, Rennie, and, her son, and their son, Dalton, and discovers the latter is the target of the same red-faced demon that has been following Elise for some time. When the paranormal activity in the Lambert home gets more intense, Dalton is left seemingly comatose, and Elise must send Josh into the further to save her son. Josh's spiritual form manages to free Dalton from the lair of the red-faced demon, but in making their escape, they are ambushed by the Black Bride that tormented Josh as a boy. Though Josh seems to fight off the spirit, he is secretly possessed by it. With the demon taking hold of his physical body while Josh's spirit is trapped in the further, only Elise realizes the deception, but true to prophecy, the Black Bride uses Josh's body to strangle Elise to death. When the police investigate Elise's death, Josh becomes the primary suspect of her murder. The Lamberts move to Lorraine's house, but the demonic activity only follows them there. Specs and Tucker discover the tape of Elise's first meeting with young Josh in her house, which reveals that somehow adult Josh was present at the seance between Elise and his younger self. With help from Elise's colleague, Carl, Tucker and Specs contact Elise's spirit, which points them in the abandoned hospital where Lorraine used to be a doctor. Those clues led them to Parker Crane and the dark story of his evil mother, who was revealed to be a real puppet master behind Carl's career as a serial killer and as well as a, as a demonic Black Bride entity. Elise's ghost battles and then exercises Michelle Crane's ghost in present day, freeing Parker's spirit just in time for to stop Crane from using Josh's physical body to murder the Lambert family. Josh and Dalton both return to normal and presumably go on li to live better lives. In the most recent development of the series, Specs and Tucker continue their demon fighting work now with Elise's ghost as their guide. The team arrive at the home of a family whose daughter is in a coma similar to, to Dalton's, which when Elise searches the home, a terrible dark spirit reveals itself to her, presumably setting up the next demonic, demonic antagonist. So, that is the complete timeline for Insidious franchise. Now, I can tell you this, uh, the Insidious franchise is a very good one. It probably brought back horror the way it should have been, um, and I really enjoyed the Insidious franchise. However, one thing I am wanting to see and looking forward to, hopefully, that they touch upon uh, pretty soon is, of course, the uh, ending to Insidious 2. We see Elise look at something, but you never know what that is, and it just has the title card of the Insidious 2. However, I hope they are working on that in the future, so fingers crossed for that one. But that's going to do it for this video, guys. Thanks, guys, for watching another episode of Timelines. You guys seem to really like this video. I did a really, I, I did a Timelines video on um, on Paranormal Activity, and you guys really liked that one. I also did one on Halloween, and you guys enjoyed that one as well. So I might keep doing these videos um, because they are pretty fun to do, and I get to learn more of the history and timelines as to where they are in chronological order of the series. So thank you guys for watching this video, and I hope you guys enjoyed it. Leave a like, leave a comment. Be sure to subscribe to be part of the Madhouse. And like always, guys, I'm the Knights of Horror, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.